Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Chromecast with Google TV. And I'm actually going to focus a lot on the privacy aspects of it. I've noticed that other reviewers, when looking at a streaming device, that they don't really talk about the privacy implications, you know, on whether you're being tracked, whether you're being served personalized ads, and whether you can turn off those features or not. I'm also going to share my thought process in deciding which streaming device to purchase. I factored in things like privacy, the amounts that I actually use the streaming device itself, and the cost of it. So let's take a look. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LiberaPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below. All right, here I'm gonna do a quick ASMR unboxing. The Chromecast device itself is fairly tiny kind of fits in the palm of your hand here. And on the tail end here is the HDMI cable, and this is what you use to plug it in directly to your TV. The remote itself is also pretty tiny and the quality itself feels good considering the price. This is not rechargeable. It does take in a AAA set of batteries, which are included in the box here. And then here you have the power outlet with the USB type C connector here. But otherwise, not much else here. Overall, it is a very nice looking device. So I have a Samsung TV and like most other modern TVs, it is considered a smart TV. And this TV has its own operating system where you can watch and download apps like Netflix, HBO, Max. But there's one problem that a lot of them tend to not be well supported and they start to show their age when you're browsing through the apps. I've noticed on my TV in particular, it's kind of sluggish. And lately I've just not been having a good experience. Sometimes the experience could vary depending on the app. The Netflix app, for example, seems to work smoothly, but no matter which app I've been using lately, I'll sometimes see this sort of network error appear which makes no sense because my network is fine. I would sometimes have to just hit OK, just reboot the app and it works perfectly fine. Other times I'd have to actually turn off the TV and then turn it back on to get it to finally work. But other than that, the Netflix app itself runs fairly fast. But then if we switch over to the HBO Max app, there you have a lot more issues. It's a lot slower. And then for a while, a lot of shows I would watch wouldn't even play or if they did play, they would play with no sound. The past few months though, it seems to have been fixed, but just overall, it leaves a bad impression on me and makes for a bad experience. And that's what prompted me to ask, hey, why don't I use a streaming device? I'm probably gonna get much faster speeds and just overall a more better supported operating system. And then one thing that annoyed me a little bit was the fact that I started seeing ads in the bottom left corner there on my Samsung TV. And so originally when I was deciding which streaming device I'd get, I wanted to be certain to avoid anything with ads or any kind of personalization. The heavy favorite for me was getting an Apple TV, even though this device is significantly more expensive than the cheap alternative, like getting a Roku stick for $40 and virtually having the same features and abilities. I knew that things like the Chromecast or the Roku were going to be a sort of tracking ad personalization nightmare that I wanted to avoid. But then I factored in something else into the equation here. I realized that the price of an Apple TV was a bit too much. 
right now it's listed as 179 dollars msrp so with tax that brings it pretty close to around 200 dollars but i did have a backup plan apple recently started selling the apple tv 4k 32 gigabyte model for 150 dollars and so with tax that's looking at around 160 dollars so i thought okay this is you know 30 40 bucks cheaper this puts it a little bit more reasonable it's still very expensive but i figured that if it's going to make my life way way better in terms of ads and tracking then i feel like it would have been worth it but then something else i considered was the fact that eventually a couple years from now when the playstation 5 is actually available for purchase i'm most likely going to get that for you know sony's exclusive games and i realized that that is ultimately what i'll end up using for everything you know for playing games or mostly ps4 or playstation exclusives and i can use that to watch netflix hbo max youtube in 4k definitely don't like having devices that i may not need so it wouldn't really make a lot of sense to spend close to 200 dollars on an apple tv only for a year or two later to get a ps5 and so then i started pondering the other alternatives the google chromecast and the roku roku device i've actually used it with a different tv a few years back and it was mostly an okay experience i don't recall there being that much lag but i did read and did a little bit of research and apparently they're doing a lot of tracking and and you're seeing ads in the operating system so i wanted to avoid that and then i looked at the google chromecast and the Chromecast by itself costs $50, although you can get it with a Netflix bundle and actually save a lot of money. So that's the deal that I ultimately ended up getting. You get about $84 of credit. And ultimately, this Google Chromecast uh, with Google TV costs about $6. Of course, when you factor in tax, it ends up being about $13. And I said to myself, that sounds like a really good deal. It's close to being free itself. And so... I thought, okay, let me let me go this route and worst case scenario, if I don't like it, I guess I can just sell the Chromecast for like 20 bucks and maybe even make some profit. But of course, before that, I had to ask myself, how much privacy am I sacrificing? How much data am I giving up here? I started researching and I found an interesting article by Mozilla and I compared their review in terms of privacy on the Apple TV and the Chromecast and apparently, they don't sell your data or your viewing habits on the device itself to third parties. So that was interesting. It, it seems like the privacy is not as bad as I thought. So it seems like both the Google Chromecast with Google TV and the Apple TV 4K don't track your viewing habits and sell them to third parties. It does seem that by default, they both enable or personalized ads, although you can switch them off for both. But surprised me to see this from apple because all this time i was considering spending 200 dollars to avoid any ads of any kind and any tracking but it seems like they do somehow serve you personalized ads one thing i should say beforehand is if you do decide to go for the chromecast with netflix bundle make sure that when you set up the chromecast that you use the same google account as the one that purchased the chromecast if you bought it directly from from google store otherwise you're going to have issues redeeming that netflix credit once you begin the initial setup here the very first piece of information that google asks you to give up is for a google account at the very least thankfully these days you can create a google account without actually needing a gmail account in this case here i'm going to enter in my gmail account to move forward so then you'll get to accepting the terms of service here and you'll see that Google also collects and temporarily stores the voice and audio history from microphone use to improve the product experience. Me personally, I won't be using the built-in controller's microphone, so I won't worry too much about that. Next, you'll be taken to accept legal terms. And then here you'll see uh, several options uh, for Google services. You can uncheck the option to share location data to help improve Chromecast. You can turn off Google TV using your activity from across Google to improve your recommendations. So at the very least, it's letting you opt out of these tracking options. And so just to do a quick scroll down as I'm navigating here through the apps, you can see that it is very quite snappy. 
But anyways, once I've set up the Chromecast, I started digging around and looking at the settings. You could turn off a lot of things. You know, you could turn off personalized ads. You can turn off tracking in a lot of cases. I was hoping that I can sort of isolate my Chromecast viewing habits from my phone and kind of keep them separate. But I do have a Google Premium account. And so I had to set up my Chromecast with that account, which is the same that I have on my phone. So, so Google does know what I'm doing on both devices now. Again, you could turn off a lot of tracking to some degree, but not everything. Although the most important one I think is to turn off or opt out of personalized ads here. And then one downside of the Chromecast is that there is this for you tab when you set it up and that includes personalized recommendations. So originally that was enough to throw me off, but then I later found out that you can put the Chromecast in apps only mode and remove that tab altogether. At this point, I said to myself, yeah, this is definitely a steal. This is like the best value. Yeah, I'm probably giving up a bit more privacy, especially when I factor in that I don't use the device a lot. I said to myself, well, I'm not going to be able to track a lot or get, gather a lot of data if I'm not really using it as much. This Chromecast is really going to be more of a convenience thing, especially when I have friends over. I can just pop in something. Maybe we can watch a music video together or watch movies and shows together. So that's part of the reason why I wanted this device. But then what sort of brought my happiness and satisfaction level a little bit down was the fact that you could turn off that for you section, but you're actually still being served advertisements. So when you turn on the Chromecast, your home is an ad for a show. And then if you swipe down, you can access your apps. And so that this rubbed me the wrong way. But then I later realized that it's not like a silly insurance ad or something really random. It's actually just an advertisement for a show that they're recommending, which is still an advertisement, but I feel like it's not as bad as I thought. And to be fair to Google and the Chromecast here, pretty much every other platform does the same thing. Heck, even recently, I've noticed that on an iPad, when I go to the app store, they're actually serving me an ad for suggested apps. And then for all my Linux fans out there, the app stores do that to a degree already. And actually, in a lot of cases, it, it makes sense because if you open up the app store, you kind of want to be recommended apps and let the user know that you know a very popular app is supported on on this platform so i said to myself okay it is annoying but it's not as bad and pretty much every app store is doing this so so if we're willing to accept those then this is not as bad as i thought in terms of performance the chromecast obviously runs a lot faster than my samsung tv although it's really going to depend on the app netflix runs pretty good on both on hbo max it runs a little bit faster, but in some ways it's just as slow, just different. I think it's fair to say that it's not so much the Chromecast, but it's just really the HBO Max that will run slow pretty much everywhere. In the few weeks I've been using the Chromecast, most of the time when I start it up, I'm able to launch an app fairly quickly. Although on one occasion, it wasn't starting at all, and I actually had to get up and power off the Chromecast because it's always in this sort of suspended mode and I guess it just wouldn't turn on but otherwise it's been a fairly good experience overall. One other sort of nitpicky issue is the controller. The controller itself is fine but I feel like the power button is tiny and in the wrong place. When I grab the controller my thumb naturally goes to the sort of top right side whereas the power button is all the way in the bottom left side. When I grab the Samsung TV remote, at least my thumb is towards the top so I can easily just move my thumb. But on the Chromecast device, I actually have to like slide my thumb in a really weird angle. So I would prefer that they put like the power button on the side or something. One other thing to note that I know a lot of people are gonna say is that why not just fire up a Raspberry Pi and either install a Plex server, Kodi, even things like Big Plasma TV that are open source and more privacy respecting. I've actually tried playing around with Kodi in the past and that's something that you kind of have to hack your way and set up. If you're gonna load the mainstream apps like YouTube, Netflix, HBO Max, you're gonna have to get sort of like the unofficial versions. So a combination of taking 
a lot to set up and just the reliability of it scares me off from relying on it. Then Big Plasma TV, I've tried it. It's just not there in terms of performance yet. One thing I would love to see is that a company like EOS, for example, that they make their Android fork that's privacy respecting. I'd be interested if they're able to take Android or Google TV put it on a sort of mini, maybe a Raspberry Pi, I guess, and have it work very similar to Google TV without the Google tracking. Maybe even put all these apps that track you across all devices on a container and then sideload other apps that you know better respect your privacy. That'd be interesting to see and actually would support that because I don't want to depend on Google or Roku or even Apple for creating a streaming device. So overall, I feel like I got a really good deal. I bought this Chromecast for essentially $13 with the Netflix bundle. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think I made the best choice? Are you interested in getting a streaming device? Do you think I'm giving up too much in terms of privacy? Would you prefer getting an Apple TV 4K? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time.